Thank you for joining me again. Today, we're going to talk about labels and how labels have a bearing on a dog's behavior. So let me share my screen. What does unlabel our dog mean? What does that really look like? Labels are everywhere. They're so ubiquitous that we really don't even understand or appreciate that we're using them. What is the problem with labels? Well, to begin with, they really don't describe what is taking place. They also don't create consensus. So consensus in the sense that you might be thinking about a certain behaviors when you're using a label, and I'm thinking about something else. So we're really not understanding each other. And of course, if we don't know what we're talking about, the specifics of what's going on, how can we get to something different? How can we teach our dog an alternative, something that we'd rather the dog do? So let me give you a couple of examples here. A label is an interpretation. For example, Rex saw the white dog and completely freaked out. He went totally cujo on me. So these two things, freaking out, going cujo, what do they mean? I might think that if you say that the dog freaked out, is it that the dog approached the other dog? Is it that the dog went behind its, its owner's legs because he was feeling really concerned about the other dog? So as you see, there's really no way of knowing what the label is describing. Now let's look at observable facts. Rex saw the white dog at about 20 feet away and he began to bark, pull on the leash towards the dog, and lunged at it. And as a result, the person almost fell or lost its balance. So here we have three different behaviors that are basically taking the place of the dog freaked out or the dog went cujo. Now we know exactly what the dog is doing. Another example. Mixie is being stubborn and even dominant. And I have a lot to say about dominance theory and being dominant in a future uh, presentation. So I hope you're going to tune in for that. She peed on the rug, even though she knows where to go. So here again, the owner is interpreting what she thinks, Mixie is thinking, and the reasons behind Mixie's behavior. She's being stubborn, she's being stubborn. Uh, I mean, she's being dominant. Instead, if we look at the facts, we can see that Mixie was sniffing the rug because she needed to eliminate, but she couldn't go outside. So if you know a little bit about behavior in this sense, when a dog starts sniffing a substrate, it means that most likely it needs to eliminate. So we, if we're aware of these facts, and of course we know how to interpret that particular behavior or that behavior in that context, we know that the dog needs to go outside. So now we can do something about it. So what can we do instead of labeling and interpreting behaviors? We can describe them. We can describe what we are observing, what is happening at the moment. And ideally, besides only observing what is happening, we could also be aware of the antecedents of that behavior or the behaviors um, that we want to modify. With this information now, what the dog is doing specifically, and hopefully the context, what happened before the dog started to lunge, bark, or whatever the behavior might be, we can begin to imagine what is it that we want the dog to do instead? What is acceptable to us? So here, instead of the dog looking, seeing another dog and starting to bark at that dog, lunging and, um, just getting overly excited about seeing the other dog. I want my dog to see another dog and be able to walk away with me calmly. Those are specific behaviors that now we can begin to have a roadmap or technically a training plan so that we know this is what the dog is doing now and what is it that I want the dog to do instead. And we can look to start training those alternative and desirable behaviors instead of what the dog is doing now. So just know that when we move away from unlabeling our dogs, we're really opening the possibilities to what is imaginable for us. What is possible for a dog to do instead of the behaviors that we don't like 
that the dog is engaging at the moment. I hope you found this useful and that you start thinking about describing behavior, describing antecedents for behavior or the context of where the behavior happened, and that you can begin to find ways to point in the direction that you want your dog to go and then finding a way to get there.